we enable a world in which everybody can fly anywhere and anytime. So we are basically the every man's version of the totally crazy and amazing stuff that Richard has introduced. Our idea is that you can also put your children or your grandmother into something that is jet powered. How do we do this? Um, we are developing, manufacturing and operating the world's first entirely electric vertical takeoff and landing jet aircraft. It's a five-seater air taxi that was only built with one purpose in mind, to be the best possible air taxi for the 21st century. And these air taxis, we are operating a transportation service that is operated by Lilium. And the great thing about this service is it's going to be the same price like a taxi, but five times faster to your destination. So you're going to have a Lilium app on your smartphone. You will, you will book a trip, but a jet will come pick you up, bring you to your destination, drop you off and fly away. Here's an example of how this could look like and what would be the benefit when you're using that service. Let's say you are in Manhattan and you want to go to JFK. Most of us have done that trip once in our lifetime at least, some probably hundreds of times. If you take the taxi, you follow the red line, and it takes you one hour. In the bad days, one and a half hours or two hours. If you take a Lilium jet, it takes five minutes, and it's the same price. Here's how this could look like. So in this case, we have, for example, a normal building, a normal office building with a landing pad on top of it, and a circle of some gates and charging points um, for jets around that landing pad, and a little lounge where the passenger could wait a few minutes um, until the jet comes. We can build something like this in almost any city in the world. We can build it on, a, on the rooftop of a building. We can build it on, on a green meadow, on a station, wherever it makes sense, because the airplane needs nothing else than just a little concrete surface to take off. If you think this is far away, I have a video for you of our full-scale prototype that is a one year, one and a half years old video in which you can see how this works in reality. So the plane takes off vertically, all the engines directed in a vertical direction like on a rocket. It climbs around 30 to 50 meters. Um, notice the sound, it's a very nice and gentle sound. It's not flapping aggressive sound like in a helicopter. And now the engines will gradually tilt into a more horizontal direction, the aircraft accelerates. And if we would go on like this, um, it would become a normal airplane, creating all its lift uh, from the wings. In this video, to stay within the range of the camera, um, the airplane stays exactly in the transition mode. So right now, around 50% of the lift is created from the wings, and the other 50% comes from the engines. And because we can vector the thrust of the engines, the aircraft is extremely maneuverable. It does all the things that Richard had to train his body to do with the software. And this way, uh, we enable also our kids and grandmothers to fly in something like this. Now it does a back transition into hover flight. Now all the engines are back into a horizontal, uh, into a vertical position. And we hover back to the ground and do a safe landing, very similar to a helicopter. And we need really nothing else than just any flat surface with around 10 to 15 meters diameter. In this case, the prototype is flying unmanned, so it has a flight control computer on board, and um, it can do all those things alone at the moment. But we will launch the service initially with pilots on board, and then in a later stage, it's going to fly uh, in an autonomous way. Thank you. Um, yeah, why does this airplane look the way it looks like? Um, we have completely reinvented a new aircraft concept to serve specifically that purpose. And it works very simple. What you see on this picture is there's a set of electric jet engines mounted on each wing. And these jet engines can tilt. And that's really all the functions the plane has. We have had two things in mind when we invented that architecture. The most important one was safety, and the second important one was simplicity. And I believe in any technical space, the most simple but yet performance solution is going to win. And if you look at a Lilium Jet's configuration now, it has 
stripped away more or less 67%, 70% of the complexity of what any other vertical takeoff and landing aircraft had in the past. It doesn't have a tail, no rudder, no variable pitch on the propellers, no folding propellers, no gearboxes, and no water cooling. Just an electric jet engine that we can tilt and that fulfills all the functions the plane has. These jet engines work pretty much the same way like a turbofan engine on a passenger aircraft, and we use them for the same benefits, like very high speed, they give us more range, they have very low noise, and they run on very low vibration, and you can have a super simple solution. If you power it electrically, it just has one rotating part. So there's a shaft in the middle, two ball bearings holding the shaft, and uh, the fan blades just uh, sticking to the shaft and this is the whole jet engine. So it can't get more simple. It doesn't need any maintenance, so it runs over the lifetime of the plane without even exchanging the ball bearings. And because of the efficiency of these jet engines in cruise flight, we get an all-electric range of 300 kilometers with the aircraft at a speed of 300 kilometers per hour. If you put that in contrast, it's the same energy consumption per kilometer like an electric car today but you are five times faster. So this is by far the most environmentally friendly means of transportation that we have if you put the speed and the energy consumption in contrast. And as I mentioned, safety was our biggest concern because we want to operate thousands and ten thousands of these aircraft over inhabited areas. So we knew we had to find a solution that would give us the same safety level as a passenger jet in the, in the past. And we're using the same solution. We're using redundancy. So that whole aircraft doesn't have a single point of failure. Every, any component can fail and there's still another one that can take over the job. And if everything fails, we have a parachute on board that safely brings down the aircraft. Now, here's an example what that means for your life. Everyone accepts a certain amount of time spent traveling every day. And if you can do that five times faster, you have five times the radius of life. And because the surface in this case is squared to the radius, you have 25 times the possibilities of what you have. If you're using a car, it's the red circle. If you're using a Lilium jet, it's the green circle. But it's also about cost and infrastructure. With this system, if you take a look at the right, that's how high-speed infrastructure looks today. If you take a look at the left, that's how our system looks. There is no noise on the ground, there is no emission, and there is no track in nature. And because of this, we can, for the first time in history, give the same speed of connectivity to any place in the country, regardless of the size of the community, because we only build the endpoints of the connection, but not the track in between. Now, what does that mean if you have a new transportation system like this that is the same step change in speed like from a bicycle to a car, but at the same, at the same price? We think everything's going to change. We think that states will be connected to one metropolitan area. We think that it's going to be easy living in the countryside, working in cities. We will real rebalance the real estate prices. We can eliminate the transit traffic in cities, and we can make cities more green than they are today. So we really think that we are at the dawn of a new industry, and that's what we already see growing right now. It's not just Lilium building up that industry. There's component manufacturers, there's new vehicle manufacturers coming in, there's infrastructure providers, there's cities approaching us from all over the world, there's new service providers. And the question is, how will this thing grow? Our approach is that we will seed uh, a, a seed place of a network, and we think that it'll grow it by itself from this point on, because everyone wants to be connected. It's like having a 360 degrees high-speed rail just on the rooftop of your building. So we see, we think that there's going to be independent entities like cities, like railways, like um, companies who want to move around their people, building a landing pad that is maybe 200,000, maybe 300,000 Swiss francs. And then we, the moment they have built that landing pad, they have to sign it into our app and we will serve them. Just on demand, completely flexible, and it's going to be an exponentially self-growing system in the end. Inclusive, open to everyone to participate. Thank you very much.